significant because for the last few years NASA hasn't had any capabilities to send human beings into space and this craft which we can see on top of this rocket mm. has got the potential to take human beings beyond the moon it's to an capsule, asteroid. Then. It's the capsule which is so important which could be the Orion capsule which could potentially go beyond the moon to an asteroid and then eventually to Mars. The rocket that we're actually seeing launched today, mm -hmm. um, that won't be the rocket they're using. They're developing an even bigger rocket which in a few years time they'll be able to test the capsule on and the hope is that for the first time in over 40 years we're going to be able to send humans beyond Earth orbit. I mean the International Space Station mm -hmm. which orbits around the Earth and astronauts live that's the highest people have really been in the last 40 years and that's only as far away as London is from York so we really haven't gone that far Absolutely. in space recently. We haven't so just take us through because it might have seemed to some like a dramatic but very short uh, kind of mission, proto mission let's call it, yeah. today. So exactly what happened? So the main thing today after they were launching was just to loop around the Earth once, check all the systems, we've got all these monitors on and video cameras to work out what's going on and then to go higher, higher than we've ever been before. So 36,000 miles, um, sorry, 3,600 miles. That's the second loop that we did today. It's the furthest we've been in 40 years with a capsule capable of taking human beings into space. And this is a one-fits-all capsule, so people of any size can fit in, whereas before you had to be of a specific height-weight ratio to be able to go into space. Wow. And then this bit we see here, this is actually the capsule coming back to Earth. And the reason we had to go to such a high height today is because as you come back to Earth, it gets very, very warm, and they need to test the heat shields. And by doing that from a higher height, they could see what re-entry would be like from a deeper space mission, such as to an asteroid or to Mars. And as you were saying, the hope is that in the future at some point, we're going to see, you know, manned flights, therefore, to Mars. But, you know, this, this mission itself has had hiccups along the way. It's taken a long time. The future's pretty uncertain about how this is going to be. Going it forward. has, and the problem with um, space exploration, the moon landings, for example, it was never about exploration. It was always about politics. China, mm. for example, are now trying to send a human being to the moon, and it's all about saying we can do a big thing well and the moon is a great place to stick your flag and say this is where I've been as a country so yes of course we want to go to Mars NASA says by the year 2030 humans are built to go over the hill they naturally want to explore mm. but it's now down to politics and it's down to money there's been a lot of stalls in this program already to date I mean originally it was another program called Constellation and we were going to go back to the moon that was then cut so yes the idea is to go to an asteroid by 2020 and to Mars by 2030 but we need politicians behind it, we need money behind it, it is expensive and even though space generates a lot of revenue and benefit, more people need to understand and be behind that before we'll really see something like that happen. So a lot of hurdles to get up Still there. Still a lot of hurdles, but a great achievement today, so, and it's just been a great year for space. It has indeed, hasn't it? So I'm sure we'll see you again soon. Good to thank have you, you with us, so thank you.